What is going on guys? Today on the bus we are going to be talking about solar panels and how we're going to get them up on the roof. So I have these 100 watt solar panels from Renogy in front of that emergency hatch up there. I should be able to put six of them keeping it pretty flush up against the bus. How am I going to get it flush up against the bus? That is what we're going to jump to and I'm going to show you how we're going to do that. Before we do that, make sure you hit that subscribe button for me because it helps out the channel a lot and also keeps you up to date on what I'm doing with this crazy super bus build. So now we got that out of the way, let's jump up there. Let me show you what we're going to do. This here is going to be the strut channel. The bolts through the bottom here are going to be going into the top of the bus, just through the sheet metal. And then I have this uh, rubber spacer thing that I'm going to show you here in just a second. And then I have some big gigantic washers to throw underneath the bus as well. So when thinking about spacers to hold up the uh, the panels up onto the roof. I was trying to think of something that would be a good idea. Hockey pucks. They're only one inch thick, so the gap is not very high, but it also keeps it from rattling back and forth over and over again while you're driving down the road, scratching, wiggling, squeaking, uh, drilling out a half inch hole in these hockey pucks to fill with the half inch bolts that I'm using for the strut channels up on the roof. Use the drill press, made it quick work, threw some uh, half inch holes through here, and now we can throw the bolts through, down through the strut channels, and into the roof. So let's jump up on top, and we've got to start measuring out where exactly we want to put the strut channels at. We're going to leave this vent in place. Since I sealed up everything else, it's probably a good idea to keep this here. If we use this strut piece here, we'll do another one here, measure out 21 inches to the side, and then bolt it in. And then in the back, we can do it straight down the center. And then that way I can either add more solar panels later, or I could do something else like some sort of rack to hold snowboards or things like that. So what I'm going to do is take a little bit of this black sealant here and just kind of go around the hole here. But basically we want to seal this up as best we can, because this will be a prime spot to leak. Pretty much what it's going to do is go down through here go down through our hockey pucks. Whoa. And down through the hole. All right, ready? Yep. All right, so we have these three put down, which means we need to do the same exact thing on the other side and then measure out 21 inches and do them down the other side here. Uh, it is now time for dinner, so it's gonna be dark next time you, uh, the next step. All right, so now that it's nighttime again, it is time to jump back up there and start securing all the rest of the strut, unistrut panels, or unistrut channels up on top. Carter rolling in hot in his slash my old Jeep. And just like we did for the first one, throw some bolts through, throw some sealant on top of these hockey pucks and then send it on in. You can hear the timidness in his oh. voice because there's like a nine foot fall right next to us. So. But it's also nice you can't really see the ground. That's true. <laughs> Sketchy. Yeah, so. All right, so tonight we're going to be talking about the solar panel mounting to those strut channels that we have already mounted to the roof is aluminum. It's gonna make it a little bit easier to drill, a little bit easier to cut, and it's also gonna be a little bit lighter up there on the roof. So this is a four foot section. Uh, before I do cut it, I am gonna mark down the center line on here where I need to drill a hole later on. Drill it before I cut is gonna make it a little bit easier so I don't have to measure it over and over and over again on each bracket. Every one inch with little dots and every two inches with a long stripe. I know on the long lines I'm going to cut for those two inch brackets, but that one inch is going to be where I'm going to drill my holes for the brackets that go onto the roof. All the brackets cut and drilled up, it is time to start working on the solar panels. Now with the holes all marked up, it'll be pretty easy 
throw some fasteners through here, throw a washer on each side and a nut on the outside. Awesome, there we go. I have all six panels now with all the brackets on there, four panels, four brackets per panel. So now it is time to take them up top. Before we put the solar panels in, I'm gonna throw this guy up there. This is one of those RV things where it kind of seals everything up so water doesn't leak in. So how these guys work, they are spring nuts. So they're springy, which means they press up against this channel here. You put it in sideways, and then you just kind of turn it and it sits in place. That way, these channels, you can kind of slide things back and forth as you see fit to make sure they all fit. See fit, they fit. And we are jumping back in time just a little bit before we put all the structure into the buzz so you can see all the roughing in of all the wires. Tonight is going to be the night where I do all of the bus wiring. That way I can stop using the shop lights and the lights that I use for my wedding. <coughs> so that means I need to get stuff like this all pre-wired into the bus. So let's talk the wiring. Each of these lights uses 320 milliamps, meaning your phone battery can actually run these for quite some time. Where are the cabinets going to be? to the very, very back, it should be approximately 20 feet. If I have eight lights, it should be about 2,500 milliamps or 2.5 amps. That means I'm gonna run the main power wire for them at 12 gauge wire. Uh, 12 gauge wire does say should be able to be about 50 feet or so before it has too much of a voltage loss to make the rear lights dim, if every single light is active and on. Now I know I can run all the grounds to the body of the bus, but I want to make sure and limit everything to separate from the starter batteries. Starter batteries need to be staying by themselves and the house batteries need to be staying by themselves. That way I don't have anything back and forth on accident. Also makes it easier so if I have a short later on, something arcs to the side of the bus, it has no conductivity because it can't arc that direction. So it's kind of like a, uh, a safety measure that I want to do. So I'm going to run a ground wire for everything that I'm going to be working on. I am going to temporarily install each of these lights here. Pull off pretty easily, have a couple screws, and they screw right up on in. So these will go in real quick, and then we're going to start worrying about wiring them. Ideally, I will have four of these lights right here in the cabin somewhere. I have one here in the kitchen, one here in the bedroom, sorry, bathroom, and then one in the bedroom back there. With all these lights up here now temporarily in place, it is time to start hooking up all the wiring to this main harness. I am gonna be wiring them up with a switch. I purchased these switched online on Amazon and they work with a 12 volt system. I then have the power wire run to my light and then have the ground run to the switch and then back to the light. I am gonna start by just splitting these wires apart. Then I'm gonna strip the two sections apart but I'm going to do it in two different sections. That way they can't come close to each other and they can't rub later on. With the wire stripped off here, I'm just going to attach a little bit of the red wire to the red wire, black wire to the black wire. So that way I can solder them all together. I learned how to solder from my dad uh, when I was about six years old. Thanks dad. So now I like to solder pretty much everything that I can. Okay, with everything wired, in theory, this should turn the light on. Ha <laughs> ha, yep. So I guess now I just gotta wire up the rest of the bus and we're gonna test all these lights at nighttime. Okay, dang. This is super bright here. This is awesome. Um, I was not expecting this to be this bright. Now with all these lights in here, I can start taking out these uh, string lights that I have here that some of them are starting to not work anymore. Now that all these lights are in here, which I'm so stoked about, I'm assuming you guys watching this can see a lot better now. First thing I'm going to do is run these 8 gauge wires. We've got the positive and the negative. Running it from the battery up front behind and I'm actually going to wire it back here. 
Then using these bus bars, I'm gonna mount these guys into the walls. So then when I wanna add anything power-wise to the back of the bus, I have access back there to wire as much stuff as I have in there. Throughout the entire bus, I am gonna be using this 20 amp cabling. I also got 20 amp outlets and I'll be doing 20 amp breakers. 20 amp is probably overkill. That is for pretty much, you know, a fridge, a stoves, things like that. Everything is gonna run 20 amps so I can plug anything into anywhere and be good to go. We didn't film all of it because it was a lot of wiring and it's very, very repetitive. As you can see here along the walls, we have all the different wires, cables, and circuits that we were running here in the bus, including up here, I added in speaker wire and excess yellow wire, which will be the side marker lights. All the wiring is pretty much roughed in, which is super duper exciting. Now that we jump back from the past, this is what we're working on now. So right here we got the power inverter. It's a 300 watt Renogy power inverter and a 60 amp Renogy charge controller. Solar panel does come down here in through there to kind of keep in place, comes back out and then I'll wire it around, connect it down here and have it come up into the bottom of this charge controller here. So these batteries will be coming over to the inverter and the inverter will power out through this high amps, but that'll be a little bit later. Facing off the bottom of the charge controller, I didn't think this one through beforehand. I have to do everything upside down, but uh, I'll be plugging everything in to the bottom of this, starting with the battery, getting it started first. Although it is currently dark outside, it's not going to be uh, any solar coming through. It is always recommended that you plug in the battery first before you plug in the solar panels. That way this charge controller is prepped and ready and is ready to receive that power. So for all of the power for inside the bus, I got this fuse box, breaker box, combination of everything. I, what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut it out, mount it into here, get everything set up, and then punch out the holes for all the wires for all the 110, all the 12 volts that come into the back side of this. And then this board here is going to be mounted up underneath in here. With this panel now bolted in down here and the actual fuse box, all the breakers and everything will be in this panel here. It looks a lot better and that's going to be tucking kind of everything hidden away underneath in here so you don't see any of the wiring, any breakers or anything where you're going. And it's also going to keep everything, and I mean everything, all in one spot when it comes to electrical, batteries, inverter, solar, breaker. I'm going to have another little uh, section where I'm going to put the DC to DC charger in here. So everything is going to be in here. Lots of ventilation to keep everything nice and cool. Coming out here, we're going to be hooking up the DC to DC charger to the physical batteries themselves. So I have the power cable and I also have the ground cable. Those are going to be very simple, just up underneath the bus here and then through the hole in the backside, just like the rest of the power cables that you see. I am going to swap out these batteries from April 2015 no, 2016, woohoo, and 2015. So the newest one being almost eight years old. Yeah, let's swap them out with the best batteries that I know of, some yellow Optima batteries. Just fishing this on the backside here, up underneath into the battery tray, just like all the rest of the wires. Okay, the wire's now in the box, crimp some ends on and hook it up to this last battery here. Obviously black's gonna be ground, red's gonna be power. It is a little dark outside, so it's going to be a little harder to film outside. So I'm just going to show you guys what I'm doing right here. I got this shore power. It is a 30 amp, pretty basic RV shore power thing that I need to drill a hole on the outside in through where it's going to seal up and then wire this to my breaker box. When it comes to the physical wiring of this thing, it's pretty darn simple. So you got the three wires all stripped back. We have the ground cable. We have the white, which is the neutral, and the black, which is going to be the hot. And then bolt this guy right up to the outside of the bus. As you can see, everything is now wired into the breaker box. Got the breakers installed, got some fuses installed, got the hot to the hot, the ground to the ground, and the neutral to the neutral. Unfortunately, I did not film the installation of the automatic transfer switch. What this does is it sets the shore power as the primary, but if the shore power is not plugged in and the inverter turns on, it'll automatically disconnect the shore power and connect to the inverter. That way, 
I will never overcharge. I can't put 60 amps in accident in through the system. It'll always stay at that 30 amps and it will always prioritize the outside power before it hits the inside power. All right, guys, this is going to be it for the video. If you like the video, please hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. I'm going to see you guys all next time. What is going on, guys? My voice cracked on that one. So for, are you recording? <laughs> no bleeping, bleeping bleep. This is bleeping bus. <laughs> bleeping Jeep, you know? Yeah. When you're ready. All right. Hi